What's up guys? Welcome back to Gaming Ergonomics 101. This is lesson number four where we get into the nuanced discussion of keyboard ergonomics. And that means hand position on the keyboard, actuation pressure, standard versus ortholinear, as well as the step-by-step -step approach to help you optimize your ergonomics for your keyboard. Let's get into it. Okay, now we're going to be talking about our actual hand position on the keyboard. Right, we always assume the WASD. I think there are definitely some variants that we can consider, but ultimately it's about understanding the relative distance that our fingers have to travel. Uh, I really feel that while there are a lot of potential variants, the WASD works. It allows us to have the right performance to have the right equidistance between a lot of different key binds. So we don't necessarily have to change that. Um, but I think it's important to note that, hey there, if you want to explore other finger positioning outside of WASD, that is an option for you. It, it is a seemingly most natural as uh, we definitely form a natural triangle with the length of our index, middle and ring finger as our fingers are flexed. So uh, WASD makes sense. Um, but outside of that, we definitely need to talk about ortholinear versus standard because I did some calculations myself to see what is better. Um, and then also answering the question, does it even really matter? Okay, the next thing I wanted to chat about was ortholinear versus standard. Is there a difference? And I did some calculations to really identify over long periods of time, specifically with gaming ergonomics and gaming binds, but also with typing ergonomics or working ergonomics to see if there's a difference between the two, as well as how big the difference is it and if it really matters. So let us compare. Here we go. Okay, so what I wanted to do to compare ortholinear versus the standard orientation of the keyboard is identify the distance traveled from the WASD as well as the standard typing position. So within the typing context, what I did was I took my article, the first two paragraphs, put it into a letter frequency calculator that spat out how many of each letter was represented inside the article. Then with the distances that I calculated, from the standard position to that letter, I was able to find the sum of distances for that entire two paragraphs. And then I compared that from the standard to the ortholinear distance. For the gaming context, what I did was I identified all of the potential binds that we might utilize. And if I just included a single instance of pressing all of them, what would be the distance traveled? Um, I think definitely distribution of binds matters, but for the sake of this calculation, I wanted to keep it simple, just saying, hey, it's one instance of pressing a specific key, WASD, and then, you know, one, two, three, four, CXZ, G, V, T, R, E, tab, one, two, all of the buttons around WASD. So essentially what I found when I actually did the calculation and you guys can see the table on the screen, the total distance that's traveled uh, in a gaming context is actually less in the standard keyboard orientation. Again, it's not considering the fact that there's certain distribution of keys. If we tend to favor, let's say the T button, if we use the ortholinear, it's definitely worse. But if we tend to use the X a lot, then ortholinear is better. Right, so this table can maybe give you a, a somewhat of a identification of, hey, I use this key bind, which one's better for me? Um, so as you guys can see with this table, there's a difference between standard and ortholinear when typing the first two paragraphs of my article. There's a 50 inch difference in the total distance traveled, which over an extended period of time can definitely result in more overall stress in the standard versus ortholinear. So I think the key thing to remember with this result is that if you are typing for extended periods of time over and over every single day, year on year, then ortholinear might actually be better because over time, this small 50 inch gap might be extended into a mile or a hundred of miles. 
uh, gap and that can lead to increased risk of injury. But, but again, I have to echo that this ergonomic difference is only a small piece of the pie as it relates to your overall health. If you condition your wrist, if you pay attention to your schedule and take breaks and stretch, all of those habits will be helpful in allowing you to use the standard keyboard if that's what you enjoy. But just remember, if you are only purely worried about ergonomics and just want to optimize that small piece of the pie, then hey, go ahead and choose ortholinear for typing and then choose your own preference as it relates to gaming. All right, one thing I want to talk about when it comes to keys is the actuation pressure, which is how much force it actually takes to activate the key that you want to press down with MX blues, cherries, reds, whatever, brown, black, green, there's different forces. And there has been research that has shown that with specific ranges of forces, it's more associated with wrist pain, neck pain, and shoulder pain. And it makes sense because it requires per action, we need a little more force in our fingers to activate the keys. And with repeated actions over time, hey, that can cause some irritation. I wanna say that I think that even though the research shows that with increased actuation forces, increased risk, I think overall, uh, the bigger picture is that if you have better posture, if you have better conditioning, if you ha take regular breaks and work on your wrist and hand health on a regular basis, it doesn't matter what keys you have. It's only going to be a 1% to 2% overall difference in load over time. Uh, but for anyone that is truly trying to be peak optimization, yeah, hey, go ahead and try to select the lower actuation uh, pressure key. But to me, it's, it's marginal. It's up to you. I would, I would even focus on performance and comfort over that. Wow, wow, that was a lot. Now let's go through the stepwise process of how you can optimize your body around the keyboard. We're gonna start with the shoulder. Number one, the shoulder. You wanna make sure it is not internally rotated, not like this, but more neutral, right in the center. We also wanna make sure it's not protracted, it's nice and set in the more neutral, not overly retracted, not overly protracted, but right in the center. We always want to stay in neutral because that optimizes the use of all the muscles here as well as here. Next, we want to talk about wrist position. We want to make sure that it's not overly extended. It's not overly tilted this way because again, that always impacts how much we are utilizing the muscles along our forearms, the muscles on the pinky or thumb side of our forearm. And that can be a, a key cause of pain specifically when we're talking about the mouse we don't want to tilt it in either way or up because that can overly impact the use of our forearms next we're going to talk about the actual hand placement and it's a really simple recommendation do what's comfortable for you do what you are used to as long as you can make sure that one and two are kept in neutral number three pay attention to your scheduling you better take some breaks you have to take some breaks every one to two hours get up do some stretches walk around right there's some research that shows that hey while walking around can improve the micro circulation issues that build up in your form or that build up in your legs walking around doesn't help with the micro circulation issues that happen in your form so you should be doing some wrist and hand exercises as a break after every one to two hours next wrist and hand care those breaks are definitely helpful but do some regular exercise for your wrist and hand, understanding that you're using it all day, sitting there, gaming. If you're sitting all day too, you need to make sure your body can handle that over long periods of time. Our body wasn't meant to be sitting for eight hours a day, for three to four years at a time. Our body was meant to be moving consistently. But if we do want to assume this lifestyle, then we have to make sure we take care of our body so that we can game for longer can play more and we can hurt less those are the five steps and that's what you need to know about keyboards okay guys thank you so much hopefully you guys learned a lot please share this really with anyone that you feel like it might be beneficial for if you feel like you learned something pretty cool tell me in the comments if you feel like i missed something i'll add it to my next lesson maybe 
And, you know, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Sub to us on Patreon if you want to support us. Or if you have any issues of your own and you need help, become one of our health coaching tier members and we can work out a plan specific to you, specific to what you need to accomplish your own individual goals. If we've helped you before, let everyone know in the comments how we've been helpful for you. And again, look out for lesson number four. That's going to be the mouse.